Hello everyone. Sorry it's been a little bit since I've um, been online. I've just had a few personal issues going on. It's all sort of sorted now. I've done a lot of reading whilst I've um, been resting and learned a few more interesting things. I've been reading a book called um, uh, Ancient Times by Breasted. Uh, what's his name? It's a second edition. And it was it was a, a very interesting read. Um, so my start when I was reading the book, I thought, oh, this sounds really interesting. So I bought this up, and it's my CN Greece. I apologise for saying the name wrong. We all know I'm Australian. I can't speak anything but Aussie or Aussie in any Aussie lingo. So anyway, this was the last phase of the Bronze Age. Okay, I just don't. Yeah. Okay, in ancient Greek, spanning the period from approximately 1600 to 1100 BC, it represents the first advanced distinctly Greek civilization, mainland Greece, with lots of potential states and urban organization, works of arts, and a writing system. The most prominent site was Mycenae in the Argyll, after within the culture this of this area is named. Era is named. Other centers of the power that emerged included Pylos, Tyrus, Mydea, and Penelopolis, Ultramos, Thebes, um, Athens, Central Greece, Locos, and Thessaly. Mycenae and Mycenae influenced settlements also appeared in Epirus, Macedonia. On the islands of the Argent Sea, on the coast of Asia Minor, the Levian, the Cyprus, and Italy. Mycenae and Greeks introduced several innovations in the fields of engineering, architect, military infrastructure, while trade over vast areas of the Mediterranean was essential for the Mycenae economy. In the syllabic script, the Linea B offers the first written records of the Indo Greek language and the religion Indo European. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, in their religion. Odyssey also already includes several deities that can also be found in the Olympic Paris of Pan Pantheon. Mycenae Greece was dominated by a warrior elite society that consisted of a network of palace-centred states that developed rigid, rigid hierarchical, political, social and economic systems. At the head of the society was the king known as Wenax. Mycenae Greece perished with the collapse of the Bronze Age culture in the Eastern Mediterranean, to be followed by the so-called Greek Dark Ages, a recordless, a recordless transitional period leading to the arch, archaic, arch, archaic Greece, where significant shifts occurred from place-centred, palace-centred, centralised, to decentralised forms of socio and an economic organisation, including the extensive use of iron. Various theories have been proposed for the end of the civilization, among them the Dorian invasion of all the activities that are connected with the sea peoples. Additional therapies, theories such as natural, natural disasters, climate changes have also been suggested. The Mycenaean period became the historical setting of much, much of ancient Greece literature and mythology, including the Trojan epic cycle. Now, what I found really interesting in this was this book brought me to this place, and when I was having a read of it, I come back to Hercules and um, giants, or, you know, like Cyclops, yeah. So, apparently, it was the birthplace of Hercules. So, um, <clears throat> let's have a look at this. The Bronze Age of the mainland Greece is generally termed as a Hylactic period by modern life religion. After Hellas, the Greek name for Greece, the, this period is divided into three sub periods the early Hylactic period, 2000 C, 2900 to 2000 BC, was a time of prosperity. Was a time of prosperity with the use of metals and growth in technology, economy, social and social organisation. The Middle High Electric MH period C 2000 to 1650 BC faced a slower pace of development 
as well as the evolution of omega rom tripod volumes and assist grade burials. The later higher dialectic soil period, C1650 1650 BC, roughly coincides with Mycenae and Greece. Now, this is 1050 BC is when um, this place I want to show you was built. built. Okay, um, I'll leave the links up in the description for everyone that wants to have a read of all this. But what I wanted to show you was now there were several of these forts that were set up along a line and it was a trade route for everything that you could possibly think of and everything was, you know, top of the wall. Now this is what they say of the Mason Lake Mason Hill. Apparently they say that the Cyclops built it. I hope everyone's been well and had a good week. Now this is what I wanted to show you is the map of um, Tyre, Tyrus, Tyre, Tyrus, I'm sorry I can't say it right there anyway. It's basically a star fort with a moat around it and um, it, it's still got the ruins there. There was a few drawings done so I'll show you shortly. I think this is one here. Now this is um, this is one of the books I've been reading. Now, in the book here, it's got, um, unlike the Cretan places, this dwelling of a Argent prince is massively fortified. Um, I'm just going to zoom this in. I apologize just to read it. Okay, so, unlike the Cretan palaces, this dwelling of an Argent prince is massively forfeited. Well, yeah, a rising road, A, leads up to the main gate, B, where the great walls are double, so, I think, I can't quite see it, but there's B there, C's here, D's there, E, um, F, no, G is, yeah, yeah, oh, there's G, and then H and I, okay, so, we got, B is where the gate walls are doubled, and assaulting, party bearing the shields on the left arm must hear C and D march with the exposed right side towards the city by the gate E F the visitor arrives in the large court F on which the felt palace faces the main set entrance of the palace G leads to the forecourt H where the uh, exact I can't say this word I apologize found the palace of the household altar of the king H 144, behind a forecourt. H is the main wall of the Palace of Europe. This was the earliest castle of Europe with the outer murder walls of stone. The village of the common people clustered with about a foot of castle of the castle hill. The whole formed of the nucleus of a city-state in the plain of Argos. So the scattered tribes of the Indo-European parent people um, until the diverging migrations finally ranged um, them in a line from the Atlantic Ocean to the north, northern India, page 87 and figure, oh sorry, while their eastern kindred were drifting southward on the east side of the Caspian towards India and the Greeks on the west side of the Black Sea were likewise Moving from southward from their broad pastures among the Danube, driving their herds before them with their families in the rough carts drawn by horses, the rude Greek tribesmen must have looked out upon the fair pastures of these thousand in the snowy mound son of Olympus in the blue waters. So I just thought this was really interesting to show you. They're saying it was built in 1050 BC, so... Um, I'll just see if I can find some photos of ruins for you. Um, before I go on with this, I just wanted to show you the map that they're showing in this book now. It was a map of Greece drawn in 1791 by William Farden at a scale of 1 to 350,000. Okay, so I'll just pause it so I can zoom in. 
map I wanted to show you here is 1791. Everything's just all destroyed. So it looks around the time of the reset, and I believe there was a reset event that happened around this time. So what I wanted to show you here was, when I was looking at it here, was in the reading it's got here, in this map, or rather a geographical essay, Mora, and the adjacent parts are debated accordingly to the drawing of the German engineer Vandermeer von Bodenshof in the Phoenician service, a glorious manuscript reliably communicated, communicated by some later travellers to whom we owe a multitude of new and interesting details in the servitude several districts of Greece, Macedonia, and as well as the Apicello and on the western southern islands of Anadoli, for the country round Athens, or ancient <coughs> and, and Attica, the passes of the Thermopolis, and the valley of the Tempe, with the surrounding parts of the roar of the isles of Zan and Nir. I can't say these words, I apologise. Use has been made of the paper above Mount Stuart, the ancient names on the line as a minute. And the names on these maps, you can make out some of these places still. So we've got Venice, up, Gulf of Venice up here. <coughs> There's another map I'm going to show you. And it's it's another area where you can clearly see it's got um, Tartaria in it. Um, I was wondering if anyone can tell me what I was seeing it. The mouse instead of the top screen. Sorry, it's my laptop. I'm not used to this. Um, okay, I have to do it this way. All right. So, um, can anyone tell me what these little things are here? Where is my mouse now? There it is. Um, can anyone tell me what these are? Are these? Or churches or star forts. And we know there was one at Burbank. See, Burbank's down here, but we definitely know there was a star fort there. And there's one here. We know there was a star fort there. There's one there. There's one there. And there are all the places that I've known about a star fort. So, and this map I just find really, really interesting. So, I'll put the links in the description for you. So, um, this is the Lion's Gate, they call it the Lion's Gate. It was one of the main entrance of the Citadel of the Mycenae, 13th century BC. Oops. So, the reason they call it that is there's two lions up here. But you look at the way this rock has been built, like, the way it's just placed. They probably didn't even use anything other than, you know, probably a chisel here and there and just intricately done it and I don't know it's just uh, they say um Cyclops built it here's a map now they're showing where you know the different wars that went on now it, is it possible that all these star forts that we see among the wall now I'm finding tens of thousands of star forts are they all linked up underground by tunnel, by a rail system? It just seems to be something is just not right about them. There's something about them. They, some of them go very deep. They seem to be interconnected. Um, there's, I've heard about them being used as a landing strip for a hot air, air balloon with one of the ones at the US Air Force, but it was quickly scrapped after the media did a big story about it. So, what are they? Let's find out. Let's find out. Let's work together. And here we go again with the Cyclops masonry. Didn't mean to click on it like that, so. But look how well the wall is built. And, it, you know, it's still standing together today. Very well built. This is um, one of the 
tunnels, you know, to get to the different area in the walls of Tyrannus. I know I'm saying it wrong, I apologize. Some of the replica swords and cups they had. The silver repoused python with gold horns. Fresco and the Lyceum and the Jesus Big Buster. Um, this is supposed to be a, a royal tomb. I'm not sure about that. I don't know. Look how big it is on the inside. It looks like it's had a fire or something. But like, been fire there. You can see it's a fireplace. Smoke damage there. That's their handwriting. Yeah, we have ancient Greece. 